Hello YouTube and today we're going to look at this which is the Sunlu Philodry S1. This is going to be a Kickstarter starting this Monday which is the 20th of July 2020. About 12 o'clock in the UK this will go on sale on Kickstarter with a flash sale selling at about $35 per unit. Now there are restricted units for that but if you like what you see here get yourself onto the website get yourself ready for 12 o'clock on Monday. I'm not going to go too much in depth with this today. There are some great videos out there already by content creators. Brian Vines has done a very good video in which he actually weighs a spool before it goes in the dryer and after it's been in the dryer to see how much weight it's lost and to prove that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. I'm just going to unbox it for you today. We're going to take a quick look at it and I'll maybe point out some ways in which it could be improved to my mind. Uh, and some things I would like to see if in the future they want to bring out the S2 version. But without further ado, let's get it unboxed and see what we think. So here it is, comes in this nice box. The unit inside. Instructions in the box. But we don't want to look at those, do we? No, we want to see what's inside here. So it's got this sort of protective plastic around it, foamy stuff, and inside you can see. Here is the design, there's the display on the front with the two buttons. Hinged at the rear, there's where your power goes in. It's got some rubber feet on the bottom, so it sits nicely on your desk. It's got a, a hole here for your filament, but it's also got a hole here for your filament that's just got a little bung in it at the moment. So if you want your filament to come out at this angle rather than that angle, you can do. There is no way of attaching it to the wall so it is just on your desk or on a shelf above your printer you lift up the lid inside we have the power supply which has a two pin plug on it so I'll need an adapter with that that hasn't come with it with my version it may well do come with you it may be region specific it is 240 volt 50 to 60 Hertz 1.3 amps and it's a 24 volt output and 2 amps which is 48 watts okay so the unit itself like I say it's a, a two-part plastic construction so you've got the white plastic at the bottom and then the clear plastic at the top inside it's got foam on the sides which has got this thermal uh, reflective part on it here to reflect the heating then you have the piece here, this piece of metal here with the warning signs on, this is the actual heater unit. So this is what warms up and dries out your filament. And then in the bottom you've got two little spindles there which turn. Now it appears, if you look very carefully, I'll see if I can do a zoom to show you this. Just bear with me. So as you can see, there are some very small bearings where it sits into the casing there. So these are sat on roller bearings, they're not particularly free moving, but uh, they do they do roll. In fact, I might even be able to lift you one out without causing too much damage. Let's see if we can. There we go. So there's your spindle. That's what it rides on and we've got a small bearing at this end and a small bearing at that end so that free rolls and it is actually quite smooth when it's sat like that so it free rolls on that bearing like that which means you shouldn't have any issues with it snagging or pulling on your printer or causing skipped steps or anything like that so it is quite useful in that way so off camera I've just removed the four screws here uh, after taking the rollers out and had a look what's on the other side of here and there basically is there's a thermal pad 
underneath here, 24 volt thermal pad that runs right the way from this edge here, right the way around here and right the way up to this front edge here and then there's a, a thermistor sort of down there somewhere just near to the pad so that will give the ambient temperature so basically it's just a 24 volt pad underneath which heats up, the thermistor keeps it at the temperature that you set on the dial on the front for the amount of time that you allow it. So let's get it plugged in and have a look at the display on the front. So with the power plugged into the back, press the left hand button and you get the writing on the display. Now this writing is incredibly difficult to read. I have seen other people mention there is a backlight but I haven't managed to work out as yet how to get the backlight on. Uh, but it's a very grey background to the LCD and with the black lettering it is incredibly difficult to read. I'll just try to zoom in for you to get you a better a better look at that. You can see my fingers reflected in the camera, you can see the make of camera I'm using <laughs> but you can see it is black on grey so it is quite difficult to read. Now once you've got it on PV that is the measured temperature inside here okay so if you press, it's saying at the moment that the, the temperature inside there is 40 degrees centigrade. You press it again, SV. Now SV is the, the temperature you set it to. So it's set to 40 degrees and it's actually at 40 degrees. So we can change the SV. Let's put it to, let's put it to 50 degrees. Like so. And then a long press on the first button that takes you back to how long the timer is set for and you can go up and down with that for how long the heater is on for you go from one hour and it will go right the way up to 24 hours so if you've got a print longer than 24 hours I would have hoped at some point you would have come in and checked on your print and you can add the time on so it keeps warming. So we'll press long press on that again and as you can see that PV is now at 43 degrees and it's still set to 50 so it's, it's warming up up to the 50 degrees that I've asked it to go to. So this will work all the time that you're actually printing. That will come up to temperature and it will just print away to itself happily. So. I've seen it works, uh, I've seen the other guys that have done the, the reviews on it, showing it working, showing that it does make a difference. I think if you're using a particularly hydroscopic um, filament, I think this will help you, will help you a lot. Of course, um, it's only good for one roll and it's only good for drying a filament while you are physically printing with it. I can see that you can put a filament in it as it sits and actually dry it as it sits but it's only drying one side of the filament if that makes any sense. You're only drying the bottom side. So my first impressions are it's a nice piece of kit. It's nicely put together. It seems to work. Uh, like I say having looked at other people's videos there are videos out there from Brian Vines, there's videos out there from Mobot, uh, 3D Printing Revolution and the 3D Serial Tester. Uh, they've all done videos of it. I suggest that you check those out. If you actually go to Google search and search Kickstarter Sunlu, it will actually bring you up a draft project page for this product. It'll give you the prices uh, and the time it goes live on Monday which in the UK is 12 o'clock midday, 1 o'clock in Germany, 2 o'clock in Eastern Europe, so on and so on. It also gives you the prices there. Like I say, the, the, the flash sale Kickstarter price that it says on the site at the moment is 35.99 uh, and then below it it says um, th that is a saving of $34 over the price of what it will be at a normal price so it's basically it's just over half price for the first few that get in but there is a full list like I say on that uh, draft page on Kickstarter and there are also links there to the videos I have just mentioned 
Um, so overall, yes, I think it's a, a, a good thing. It works. Um, it's a nice size. It doesn't take up too much real estate on your desk. Things I would change. I'll do something about this LCD screen. Uh, like other people have said, it is dark, difficult to read. It could do with a, like I say, if there is a backlight, I haven't managed to find it. Um, but even so, it is dark. It would be nice if there was some more contrast between the, the numbers and the background. Uh, the other thing is, is that there's no obvious power switch anywhere. I do believe if you press and hold the button in a, a certain way, the screen glows blank. But I don't think it actually turns the heater off until the timer's at zero. So the only way to turn the heater off is to put the timer down to zero hours or pull the wire out of the back. I would like to see either a switch on the front to turn it on or off or maybe an inline switch on the power supply. Uh, apart from that and the backlight for the display, I think it's very good. The only thing I would suggest maybe for a version 2. Like I said, if you are just drying a roll of filament and you're not using it, you're only going to get half the roll of filament drying as the top half is away from the heater. It will dry at two different rates. So unless you come in every hour and turn it through 180 degrees, it's going to dry one side of your roll of filament out more than the other. I'd like to see a version 2 that maybe has a small motor that would drive from maybe a, a, a cog onto one of the rollers so it will actually slowly it will turn the filament spool around in the box so you can put a roll of filament in that you're going to use tomorrow or the next day or whatever press the button that says rotate or motor or whatever and then that will actually set it in motion so as well as heating it it will actually turn the spool around in the box so it's it's heating the whole of the spool evenly I'd like to see that for a version 2. I don't think it's necessary um, for what this, this product does, what it's designed to do. But I just think if they wanted to do an S2 version, I think putting a motor in to power the spool so you can actually have it free running for when you're printing, but have it powered if you just want to dry roll the filament out, I think that would be a good idea. But like I say, as it stands at the moment, it does what it's supposed to do. As you can see from other people's videos, it does help with the drying of hyperscopic filament. Uh, but I would just like to see some kind of inline switch to turn it on and off. So you know that it's definitely switched off, so you haven't got that element still heating. And a better display. Like I say, this is very difficult to read, the black on the dark grey. Um, it may be that the ones that they produce to sell, they've changed this. And this may be changed up now, I do not know. But apart from that, I think it's a great thing. I think if you can get in nice and early with the Kickstarter campaign and get it at $36 or $35.99 at the flash sale price, I think it's an absolute bargain. Um, whether it's worth the $70 it's going to be at full price, I don't know. It's it's a, an, an answer to a, a problem that you have. It saves you having to... Um, maybe keep your filament in in bags or in drying chambers or putting it in the oven and all the risks that go with that this seems to be fairly risk free um, but the issue is going to be is that you're going to have to get it warming up a bit first so it dries the filament before you start to print um, so again I would suggest if you've got a filament that is wet put it in for a couple of hours, turn it over halfway through, turn it through 180 degrees, let it heat the other side up, and then start your print. Uh, but apart from that, nice piece of kit. I want to say a massive thank you for, to Sunloo for sending it to me. Uh, I was very surprised when they agreed to do it because they were asking for some high-profile testers. I don't consider myself a particularly high-profile tester, but I am very grateful to them to reaching out to me and sending me this it will get used I do have part rolls of filament sat up around me up here that really should have been put away and should have been kept dry and I haven't done it so I will be using this to dry those filaments out and use them while I do some printing in the future if this has been any help to you at all hit the thumbs up button below if you're not subscribed to my channel hit the subscribe button I am starting to try and get some more content out now 
Uh, I've been a little bit busy with the day-to-day -day life, but I'm getting a bit of time now to be able to get some more videos out. So if you hit the subscribe button, you'll know next time I put something else out. Leave a comment in the description, uh, below the description, sorry, if there's something you want to mention, you you know, you think there's an issue with it or you, you, you can see a good use for it, um, let me know. Like I say, in the comments below, always leave a comment because it lets YouTube know that you're interacting with my videos, which then means my videos will become more widely available to other people because they'll come higher up the rankings and maybe I'll make a little bit of money. Not a lot, I've made... Oh, let me think, £73 in the last year, so I'm, I'm not, you know, making a living out of this, but it does go a long way to help me buy rolls of filament for printing stuff and buying stuff to show you in future videos. Anyway, enough of my rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.